I'm joined today by Jeff Christian, the managing partner of CPM Group. Jeff, it's great to have you back on the program. Great to be here. Obviously, you have a PGM seminar coming up in, uh, or I believe it's on the 25th of January. But before the seminar, I know you, there's a lot of depth there. I thought we'd have a, a bit of a quicker session just to run through um, sort of the, the highlights of last year and really why we, we should be paying attention to PGMs in 2022. So I guess to, to kick things off, would it be possible for you just to run through platinum, palladium and rhodium and really the price performance and the volatility that, that we did see last year and what, what the main drivers were behind that? Sure. I mean, you know, the markets were incredibly volatile last year. And to say that they're incredibly volatile is just an understatement. You know, palladium rose into May and it got up to $29.81, so $3,000. You know, this is a metal that for much of its history was trading $140 to $180 an ounce. You know, and then, uh, so the price was like three or four times what its average price has been over the last 20 years. Shoots up to $29.81, $3,000 in May. And by the end of the year, uh, we had this massive sell-off across uh, me uh, precious metals in December 15th. It was 1551. So it lost 48%. It lost half of its value from its peak. Platinum, similarly, platinum had been trading in a range of $800 to $1,000 from late 2015 in through last year, just through 2020. And then in early 2021, it rose and broke up and it got to 1293. Uh, so almost $1,300. And people, you know, we've been saying for some time that we thought that the price of platinum would break out of that range and move to higher levels. And it did it like, phew, you know, uh, right away uh, by February. And then it fell. And by December 15th, it was back down to $894, you know, the middle of that range that it had held for five years. Um, now it's back over a thousand or no, it's just under a thousand as we're speaking today, but it's back around a thousand, you know, and, and we do think that it's going to break, move above that and that, you know, what was the ceiling will be the, the, the floor. Um, and then rhodium, which is this obscure metal, it's not traded on uh, any futures market or commodity exchange, but it's critical in auto catalysts along with platinum and palladium. It rose like to, well, it rose 1300%. You know, it went from a couple thousand dollars, three thousand dollars a few years ago to thirty thousand dollars, twenty nine five hundred uh, in early twenty twenty one, and then it fell like sixty two percent. So it gave up more than half of that value by September. It was back down to eleven thousand dollars, and it's about fourteen or fifteen thousand dollars now. So you have this incredible volatility across these markets. Yeah, and and um, that's I guess one of the reasons why we're having the seminar. And in in your view, obviously it's different for each one. But um, could you just touch on really briefly what what the main drivers were behind this volatility in the PGM space um, last year? There's there's some commonality, and then you know there's specific things. So all of them I think were suffering in 2020 to some extent by the shutdown of the auto industry and the collapse or sharp decline in auto production and auto sales. And you know, auto catalysts are used to clean up the exhaust of petroleum-based fuel engines. And, and so you've got uh, platinum, palladium, and rhodium used in those auto catalysts. So all of them, and it was like you know, 40 percent, 40 plus percent of platinum goes into auto cats about 67% of palladium goes into it and probably around 90% of rhodium goes into auto catch. So this is their major market and it got hit really hard in 2020. In early 2021, you had this sense that we were coming roaring out of the recession that the lockdown had induced and that auto sales would pick up. Well, auto sales did rise, but not that much. But at the same time, you had a couple issues. And one was the supply chain interruptions within the platinum group metals markets. And the other one is specific to rhodium. You know, there's just not that much rhodium left in the world in above ground inventories. So you had the auto industry really scrounging for metal on a 
quick basis. Like, hey, we didn't need it last year, but now we need it. And then investors saw that. And it came at the same time that you saw investors moving into gold and silver. So there was this broad-based investment demand that piled into these markets, which are much smaller and less liquid than gold and silver. Just wanted to touch on rhodium quickly, because obviously we, we have done other sessions on platinum and palladium and, and, and rhodium, I guess, is, is a bit less mainstream. It's, it's, it doesn't really hit the spotlight as much, even with the price volatility of last year. I'm assuming that this is mainly a byproduct of other platinum group metals. That, that's mainly how it's derived. And I, yeah. I'd, is that mainly through Russia and South Africa, similar to the other PGMs? Um, and, and just out of interest, I mean, how, how would investors gain exposure to rhodium? I assume it's through the other PGM producers, is it? Yeah, that's the issue. I mean, rhodium is a byproduct of platinum, palladium, and nickel. Major sources are Russia and South Africa. There is some rhodium that produces byproduct, but it's all byproduct. No one mines for the rhodium per se, although the South African miners have learned over the last 15 or 20 years to start to think of themselves as PGM producers as opposed to platinum producers. And you know, we had done a study for some of the South African producers back in like 1989, 1990, where we said at certain prices for palladium and rhodium, you can give your platinum away. And you need to start thinking of yourselves as PGM producers, not platinum producers. And they didn't buy that theory at first, but by 2000, it was pretty obvious that that was the writing on the wall. So rhodium is a byproduct and, and you will tailor your mining to some extent to maximize your rhodium production. Um, but it, it's basically there. You know? And then its major use, as I said, is, is auto. Now, because it's a much smaller market, you're talking about maybe a million ounces of rhodium production a year and uh, demand. There's no terminal market, there's no futures. Uh, there were a couple banks that had created rhodium funds, ETF type funds, uh, uh, maybe a decade or so ago, but they didn't really um, take off. And they're basically liquidation only funds now. So you can't go to them and say, I want to buy into your rhodium fund. You, if you have rhodium there, you can sell it. Yeah, right. and, and, and that's been the case for some time. So it, it's very hard to invest directly in rhodium. And you know, I will say CPM Group does study rhodium and iridium and ruthenium and, and non-platinum group metals, uh, specialty metals. So we do work on manganese and cobalt and stuff like that. And when an investor comes to us and says, uh, and you know, our clients are primarily family offices or institutional investors of some sort, uh, when they say, well, we're interested in cobalt or rhodium, uh, we will say to them, if you're interested in it because you're going to invest or considering investing in a mining operation or a refinery uh, operation, we will supply you research and consulting. But if you want to invest in the metal, we'll only advise you if you agree that should you buy the metal, you hire us to manage it. Because it's very easy for an institution or another investor, uh, retail investors even, to buy these metals, but it's very hard to sell. Yeah, you know, right. when you're an investor and you come to a broker or a dealer and you say, "I want to buy rhodium," they say, "Fine, I'll sell it to you." And when it comes time to sell it, you have to go back to the same guy. He sees your phone number. He knows why you're calling, and all of a sudden, there's this enormous spread. And you know, you've seen it in cobalt and rhodium and ruthenium, where you can have a hundred percent spread. But it's like, okay, if you want to buy more rhodium, I'll sell it to you for eighteen thousand dollars. But if you want to sell me your rhodium, I'll buy it from you for nine thousand. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, you know, that may not be an accurate historical thing, but you can see that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking to investors about, well, how do I buy exposure to rhodium? Generally speaking, we'll only deal with them if they will let us manage it because we don't want to damage the market on the way out. Yeah. And there are times like in the nineties, we actually sold rhodium at a time when the market was weak and the investor just said, no, just get rid of it. And we actually beat the market all the way down. Uh, you know, so yeah. you, you, you have to be careful. No, I'm, I'm surprised there hasn't been a, a new ETF sort of, as you were sort of talking about earlier um, emerge recently with the, with the volatility, but um, moving on to 
next year um or sort of oh, sorry we're in we're in 2020 already this year um <laughs> you're hosting this seminar you have a, a pgm report due out soon um it's obviously a topic that that cpm believe is worthy of note and, and worth investigating well what why is that what 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 are you predicting to to happen uh, within the next 12 months in the space well i think there's there's several things going on and yeah we just finished and released friday our Platinum Group Metals projections to the year 2050. And we take them out 30 years because, you know, because these things are so, the auto industry and auto propulsion technology is central to all of these markets. If you had a rapid movement to electric vehicles, you don't need PGMs and the platinum industry is destroyed, right? But our view is that any move to electric vehicles is going to be very slow, much slower than a lot of people think. And you look at the International Energy Agency's data on where we're going to get, be getting our electricity for the next 30 years. They go out to 2052. And if you go out to 2050, the IEA says that in 2050, we will still be getting more energy from petroleum than we will from all renewables combined. And it's going to be petroleum and natural gas. And to a third extent, it'll be uh, renewables, which will then be rivaling coal for third place. Yeah. So our view is that the market has been wrong in writing off PGMs, that you are going to have an extended period of time where we still need platinum, palladium, and rhodium to clean up auto exhaust, because we're going to be using petroleum for a long time, despite what the overly optimistic politicians say. So that's the longer term thing. And then on a shorter term thing, you've had this situation where, as I said, platinum was dead in the water for five years, six years. And palladium went from $500 to $3,000. And the premium of palladium over platinum became so great that the auto industry started re-engineering autos to allow them to go back to using more platinum and less palladium. And that was a process that you know you had to re-engineer everything, including the undercarriage, the exhaust system, the engine in some cases, the fuel injection system, and it took time. But you're starting to see that. And that was one of the factors that you saw with the sharp increase in platinum prices last year. You're starting to see wholesale substitution of platinum for palladium and auto catalysts. That's gonna continue this year and going forward. And our expectation is that the auto industry, you know, the auto industry is suffering from the chip shortage. That's going to continue. That will restrain production and sales somewhat this year. But then by 2023, we think that is behind us. And we're going to see, in our view, a sharp increase in auto production and sales. We also think there's a, going to be a revaluation of the wisdom of moving to electric vehicles and the capacity to move to electric vehicles as fast as some people say. Uh, you know, the reality is that electric vehicles, when you're mining the lithium and making lithium ion batteries, and then you're burning coal and natural gas and oil to generate the electricity, you're not really solving the climate change issue or addressing the uh, climate change issues. And we think that the electric vehicle industry could suffer some public relations embarrassments, uh, that people are starting to reevaluate re that. And in fact, you know, the Wall Street Journal had an editorial last week quoting an article that CPM Group wrote about sort of realism in the, uh, the transition to a new automotive propulsion technologies. So we think there's a tremendous uncertainty in the auto industry propulsion technology sector, and that is going to contribute to ongoing volatility in the PGM markets as everybody tries to figure out what the present is much less the future. So on the PGM conference that you're doing on Jan 25th, um, what are the key topics that you'll be covering? And, and I guess, can you just tell us a little bit more about that? Well, it's an online seminar and it's open to the public. Um, I think they can get information from our website or from an email to info at cpmgroup.com or you might be able to post something uh, for registering it. It's an online webinar, it'll be a seminar, it'll be about an hour long. And what we hope to do is deal with the short-term issues 
and the long-term issues. We'll explore, you know, why have the platinum group metals prices become so volatile? What's the outlook for 2022 and 2023, which I'll, you know, I'll, I'll tip our hat and say, we expect the volatility to continue. What's our longer term view? What are the short term issues in terms of mine production, secondary recovery, fabrication demand, investment demand, above ground inventories? And what are the long term issues that you have to wrestle with uh, as an investor? Brilliant. All right. Well, I'm already registered, but I will be, as, as you mentioned, I'll be putting some links on that below as well. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. So, Jeff, thanks for your time today and um, I'll, I'll see you then.